and vibes with DJ Sims. Hey guys, it's your girl DJ Sims and welcome to my fourth episode of Chat and Vibes. And for today I have a very special guest joining me in the studio and it's a little bit of a different episode. Like I'm proper excited, I've seen him circulating all around social media. I have got the one and only Amio Tani with me. <laughs> That's a clap for you, though. How are you doing? You right? How are you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Good. So, obviously, you are a very successful businessman. You have multiple businesses. You even collect so many supercars. But for those that may not know or haven't heard too much about you, do you want to explain a little bit a little bit about what you do? I'm Ami Italio. Um, I'm a self-made business entrepreneur. I'm going to say self-made because a lot of people keep starting chucking that daddy's money around. But we're not daddy's money out here. We're going to go into detail in that bit later on but yeah I'm just here just trying to spread a positive vibe and start motivating youngsters to you know do a bit better for themselves and yeah that's what we like doing so that's what we're doing right now I love that <laughs> um okay so you have have multiple businesses I've seen them all over social media do you want to go a little bit into how many businesses you have and what exactly they are all right so a lot of the businesses I own um are most most of the stuff most of the businesses that I have are, are businesses that I've invested in okay. so we're more like silent partners I see a good idea I see a good team behind that business and we just invest in it so we're like silent partners in that sense majority from our fintech companies uh, franchises uh, we've got crypto companies we've got a gaming studio there's, there's a lot of businesses come together this is not a single business there's multiple businesses it's all right it's all right <laughs> um, you've gained a lot of popularity over social media as well um, through, I'm guessing through all the businesses. How did that come about? Social, you know what it is? Social media, I don't take it too serious in it. It's just, it is, I just, if I'm doing something or who I'm with or with, when I'm with someone, I'll just quickly just put a little TikTok up or a little Instagram or a Snapchat or something. And but the thing is, people get a bit like, okay, with so and so and so and so and so. Like even the other day, we was, we was in uh, um, Asian Network. Yeah. Uh, Bibsy Asian Network, right? And we was just chilling there. And then I see one of the producers come by. I was like, oh, is that the one extra? And he's like, yeah, he's just come. Because I was just sat there randomly, just ended up just sitting on the mic, posting a little video. And then just went, going, man, I don't understand. Uh, you know what it is? I have fun with social media. And that's what yeah. I see it as. Social media should be about fun. Do you think that because you just have fun with it, it just like kind of blew up in a way? Very controversial. That's what it is, isn't it? Controversial. Controversial and fun. Yeah, I have my opinions. <laughs> I have my views. And people, some people love them. Some people hate them. How do you deal with that hate? I don't. I don't you deal don't. with it. I just sit there and just laugh about it. You just laugh like, about they're, it. They're, whether you like it, whether you hate it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna change my views. It's not gonna. You know, no one's gonna pressure me into changing my views. Yeah. What I say, what I do, what I believe, that's my views. If you don't like it, don't listen. Don't just swipe up. It's as simple as that. You can sit there, you can comment, you can say certain things, but if that affects you, then you've got a problem. You've got an ego in you. You got to sit there. I I know friends. Friends. Some of my friends. They'll sit there. Oh, bro. My man's talking shit about me on the internet. On the comments, ah, oh, bro, look what he said. Bro, do you think I give a crap? I go on my phone right now. Let, let me give you an phone. Let me give an example right now. Yeah. Right. Let me give you an example. As soon as you go on my TikTok, mm -hmm. how many comments and fucking things on the bottom right is coming up? It hasn't actually loaded. Yet. I was in that so loaded. I'm guessing it says ninety nine plus. It, it comes up with. Oh, sorry. One second. <laughs> let's try that again. Right. Let, let's let's look at this. I was right? thinking, what am I looking for? <laughs> I did an aeroplane mode. Oh, let okay. me give you an example. Okay. Have a look at that. Yes. Oh my God, that's gone crazy. I can't even tell This you is what I'm saying. We're talking for that. Bruv, it's just, you think I'm going to sit there and go and through 4,000 yeah. comments? You're not going to be doing gonna that. It's never going to happen. I'm not going to sit there and argue with some little 17-year-old kid. Because you know what? Social media has got people brave. Yeah. It's come to a point right now where people think they can just talk shit on the internet and that's it. It's done. But those same people will never ever in a million years sit there and say it to your face. The other day I posted a video, right? And I must have been sitting at some uncle's house, mm -hmm. big mansion, but probably worth probably worth like twenty million dollars, right? Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to keep mentioning dollars because I keep everything we deal with is in dollars, okay, right? So I'm that's gonna, fine. I'm change back to pounds. Must have been worth about eighteen million pounds, okay, okay. right? And I had all my cars there, supercars, Lamborghinis, Ferraris, and we were watching it. And then the comment section, some guy, because I don't know why I've even bothered with it, right? He's like, ah, oh, yeah. My man's gone a bit chubby now, isn't it? I remember, bruv, you've sat there, you've seen all of this. You've seen a big mansion, you've seen a big car. You're talking about a guy that's come up from nothing. We've come from humble beginnings. We've yeah. done martial law, we've, done, we've become very successful now. Yeah. And the only thing you've had to sit there and poke fun at is, oh, bruv, he's gone a bit fat now, isn't it? So, bruv, what do you think is going to happen? I'm saying, you know what, I'm going to the gym right now. Because <laughs> underscore 7779 said I'm fat. You think I give a shit? 
Fam, it's the one joke for it's us. It's the ones that have like no usernames. It's, it's, like no, yeah, it's the nobody. It's the nobody. It's the nobody. They will never say it to your face because they just get punched in the mouth. Yeah. And this is what it is. People get f***ing, they, they get very uh, comfortable. They yeah. get comfortable to get away by saying it once, twice, three times. And like, brother, go on TikTok lives and just, people just talking. People get so comfortable behind the screen. That's it. That's what no it is. Ever, I, up until today, I've never had anyone come up to me and say, brother, so and so and so and so. It's never possible. Exactly. On the internet, everyone's a gangster. We stay away from gangsters. Exactly. We're not gangsters. <laughs> but you will get punched in your face if you talk about me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you spoke about humble beginnings. Um, literally just now. I want to know, like, where it all started for you. Like, very humble beginnings. So very humble beginnings. how was your childhood growing up? Like, how did this all start for you? Like, did you go to school? Did you go to college? Did you go to university? Like, I want to know your little story growing up. So imagine this, right? I grew up in Luton. Now, Luton, it has got a bad name. I ain't gonna lie, but to us it was it was our it was our it was it's, it's our it's our ends, isn't it? It's our place, yeah, right? That's where you lived. That's yeah. where we lived. That's right. So my dad was a taxi driver mm -hmm. up until ten years ago. He was a taxi driver all his life. Forty years he was a taxi driver. Wow. Right. Imagine this. My mum, she was doing no sewing machines. Mm -hmm. Right. So you can imagine, we're 10, 11, 12 years old. We to come downstairs. My dad's gone to work. It's coming back four five in the morning, finishing up the taxis. My mum's sitting there ten, eleven o'clock at night doing the sewing machines and just, just, just so we can earn a bit of bread. Yeah. Right? So we can put food on the table. Yeah. But them days, everybody was content with that. Nowadays, everyone wants to live that big fancy laughter. But that there, back in them days, it was, it was in programmed into my mind that, you know what? Work, 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 work. Right? That was all you knew. That's what we knew. That's yeah. what we knew. Work, 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 work. And since a very young age, all I wanted to do was make money. That's it. I didn't care about anything else except mm -hmm. money. Okay. And I realised I didn't want to put my mum and dad in a situation where they'd have to carry on living like this for the rest of their life. Okay. Right? So my number one goal was to make as much money as possible so I can retire them. And Alhamdulillah, we've done that. Aww. So now we're just living life. Yeah. But you have to understand, it was Im embedded into my brain, into my mindset from a very young age that nah, we have to work. My mum and dad didn't get a day off. Yeah. So why should I have the luxury of having a day off? If they got, imagine, imagine my mum's hands. When we was young, we didn't realise, we didn't understand this. But imagine my mum's hands from day in, day out, sewing machine. Sorry, there. Yeah. You know, it's mad. My dad's hands from holding a steering wheel 14, 15 hours a day. Yeah, yeah. But and then we think that we have the luxury of, you know what, just chilling, relaxing, while your mum and dad go to work, lying in bed, going out with the friends. and, and it's, bruv, Nah. So from a very young age, I got two jobs. My first ever job, I was at a BP petrol station. Imagine this, I was 16 years old. I used my older brother's driving license to get that job. Oh my God. My older brother's driving <laughs> license to get that job. I was a legal worker, just so I can make some money, so I can help my family out. I had not only one job, but two jobs. I was a, I was a, a leaflet, I was doing leaflets for Domino's oh, okay, Pizza, yeah. right? So in the uh, Well and Garden City, right? I was doing leaflets, just so I can make enough money, right? Now it's embedded in my brain. Money, 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 money. That's work, 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 work. Mm. I got kicked out of high school. Mm. I didn't even get my GCSEs. I didn't get a single GCSEs. Really? I didn't even sit down to take the GCSEs. Imagine that. Wow. Right, we grew up in a town called Luton and the school I went to was a racist, not, not a racist school. There was just not many Asians there, yeah. right? And imagine looking like me, I was the same size I was back then okay. that I am now, right? So I was a big guy. So I was always a target. Now, imagine I used to get into a lot of fights because obviously them days, it's, 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 I don't know if we could, can we say, can we say bad words here? Yeah, okay, we can say, say bad want. words, say but back want. in them days, don't forget our, our parents come from, they come, they come as immigrants. They left their ends, right? Everyone keeps talking about ends, 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 ends. Probably they left their ends. Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, Africa, yeah. all of these, they left their ends to come to this country so they can have a better future for their children, right? But we grew up in Luton. It was a very horrible place. Uh, you know, English Defence League, mm. in the racist. Yeah, yeah. But where do you think it was made? In Luton. It was made in Luton. Oh, the owners are all yeah. from Luton. They used to be called United People of Luton. Originally, that's what it used to be called. Oh my God. My dad grew up in Halifax, where National Front was a big thing. So after they was done with the blacks and got bored of beating up blacks, they started rolling over to Pakistanis and Asians. Anyone with a turban, if you're brown skin, you're getting it. Yeah. So them days, my dad, all of his pals, they used to go together and fight off these people because these people used to look after, they, they used to go for vulnerable people. They would never go up. So let's, let's imagine now, right? Imagine this is a group of 10 Asian mans. They're all big guys. Do you think they're going to try it with them? No, they go for the vulnerable taxi drivers. Yeah. The vulnerable workers. The, you know, up until today, we're in 2022. Mans are still saying, 
Ah, yeah, I'm just popping over to the packy shop. But that hurts my fucking soul. Yeah. That we're yeah, in that 2022. People still say that. And people yeah. think it's cool. It's not cool. That hurts us every single time. And you know what? I do this, right? I have, I'm the busiest guy in the world. I got multiple businesses. Alhamdulillah, I can retire today and live comfortably. My family can live comfortably for the rest of our lives. But I want to sit here on podcast, talk about my people. There's no one out there talking about my people. Exactly. Us Asians have gone through a lot of shit. No one talks about this. No one talks about it, but no one listens. Now I'm the voice. I listen. I talk. People listen. Because I say how it is. Now, some people don't like it. Some people do like it. But at the end of the day, I'd rather be someone that can put give back to the community. Because I'll be honest with you, the community has helped us a lot growing up. But let me give you an example. When we was younger, right? My next door neighbour. Up until today, my mum's still friends with them, right? Mm. When my mum and dad, when they used to... Obviously, they, they, they have work. Yeah. Sometimes they can't look after the kids. Yeah. But they drop you off to your neighbours. Everyone's got a story where your mum and dad used to drop you off to your neighbours. But they used to be trust. Nowadays, you can't do that stuff. You can't trust anyone nowadays. You can't nowadays. trust anyone. You can't trust anyone. Can't trust anyone. Our community was the reason we're moulded the way we are. I have gone up and down the country. East London, West London, Birmingham, Leeds, Halley. But they all talk like I do. Just not as, you know. But they all talk like I do. They all have the same mentality as I do. But then when I'm speaking out a term, it's like, oh, yeah, look at this guy. Bruv, we yeah. all speak like this. I was mm. speaking to DJ Limelight the other day. Bruv, we have the same views. We all have the same views, but there's no one talking up about it. It's true. It's 100% true. I agree. I agree with myself. And that's why I'm so confident, because what I say is the truth. So that was a very inspirational story. I'm not going to lie about your whole upbringing. Um, I want to know, does your online attention now, do you think it affects your personal slash family life? It doesn't. You know what? I'm very private. Up until today, I, like, everyone knows me as Ami Italian. No one really knows my, my actual real name. And I keep it that way. Yeah. Right? No one really knows about my family. My little brother there, he's my business partner. Yeah. He is the brains on the booty, right? And <laughs> <laughs> so I found that fucking hilarious, right? Brother. Right? It went straight <laughs> over our heads, right? But what I'm trying to say is no one even knows his name. But he's my business partner. He's worth just as much as me. Yeah. We don't have separate bank accounts. We have one bank account. His money is my money. My money is his money. Right? I don't know. All I know is tap. Yeah, I go on Apple Pay. Just, as long as it works, I'm happy. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't need to know about the finance. He handles all of that. But my family life, everyone, I just keep... I don't, I don't need to share that stuff. That's got yeah. nothing to do with... It's better private, low Keep it private. You can keep... What I, I only show you lot what I want to show you lot. Not yeah. what you lot. That's it. That's it. I just keep it like that. And that's, that's, the, that's, best that's, that's the best way to be. Way. Yeah. That's the best way. Um, so you recently spoke about watch collecting. I want to know why. why do you think watch crime is so big right watch now? Watch crime, I can tell you exactly right now. Tell and us. We've got mans in this room right now that will agree with me. But there's a supply and demand situation. We talking about Tanya? We're probably talking about now. We talk about supply and demand. Any time someone talks about supply and demand, talk about drugs. No. Well, before, you used to be, maybe two, three years ago, someone used to come over to you, brother, we've got a watch for you, but it's got no paper. But we're interested. We don't want to know because we know it's stolen. We know it's, it's come from a no good place. It's been taken off someone's wrist, right? Now it's coming to a point, right? You can't just walk into a Rolex dealership. I've got a lot of watches. I've got a very big watch collection, right? The other day, I went to Patek Philippe. Yeah. I went there with my card, but because it said my business's name underneath, mm. it said, nah, yeah. it's not possible. It needs to be on your name. You need to have your ID. We need to find out where you got this money. Oh, it's not your business, not your customer. KYC. They want to know everything. They want to know too much. They start telling HMRC everything. You think these local drug dealers... They have all this cash sitting around them. Where are they going to get bank accounts to put money into their accounts to prove where their funds have come from? So what did they do? They go to the local drug dealer, the, sorry, the local runner, say, listen, do me a favour, right? Next time you see an AP, you see a Rolex, you see a Protect, bring that to me and I'll buy it off you and I'll give you two free bags. Now these little kids are starving. They're hungry. It's hard times. It's a recession, right? It's a hard times. People's bellies are rumbling. People have got food to put on the table. Now they're thinking, wow, next man's giving me two free bags to go take someone's, someone's watch off their wrist. I'm going to do we're, it. We're riding that straight away. Yeah, of course. Now it's caused an issue because now there's supply, there's no demand, so we will we'll create the demand. They'll go out every single day, but they won't realise I'm putting my life at risk, going out there, going to get five years if I get caught, but they don't care because now they're getting good money for it. Yeah. Right? Because they've got cash. They want to give them cash, get away with it. They can't just walk into a shop. Even now, like, all these jewelry shops, you see, they, they, they all follow me. I know all of them. Yeah. But you can't go in there. You can't even give them cash. You can't even give them cash. So now it's causing an issue. 
jewelry is a big thing because rappers now they've made it so beautifully glorified that yo, yeah. you need to have a big RM everyone when you're this. follows along there you like, go. I wanna get that there you go so what happens is everyone that sees that stuff they want to act like that. So now yeah. you can't buy it from the local dealerships. You can't buy it from local A jewelers. So you know what we do? We'll just give it to the local runner. Say, yo, run up on the so and so and so. Happened the other day. One of our boys, he's coming out of his house. He's on the way to link a girl. Mm. Obviously, the girl must have set him up. Because three mans were waiting outside his house. Come outside his house. Bang, 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 bang with a hammer. Now, my mate is six foot five. Must be at least 125 kgs. And bro, when I mean the guy's a professional boxer. They didn't care. They did not give a shit. Took yeah. his watch off his wrist and gone. People don't give a shit nowadays. And that's how bad it's getting. It's going to get a hundred times worse. Why I do don't you? have watches in the UK. Even this one. Only reason I have this one, tell a lie, right? Normally you'll <laughs> never see me, right? Is I'll, I'll be wearing my Apple watch in the UK. I don't wear watches in the UK. Yeah. I don't wear. Even my driver understands. Yo, if anyone tries pulling up, run them over. They don't care. Run them over. He said, you know what? For every person you run over, I'll give you a bonus. How about that? Now they're seeing pedestrians <laughs> walking, and I'm like, boss, I think he's suspicious. I'm looking at now, you don't look so you're probably suspicious. I'm trying to get that bonus. I ain't trying to get caught slipping. Fuck that. I worked my whole life to put 60 grand on my wrist. You think I'm gonna let some little cunt take my watch? Never happening. And it's gonna get worse. It's gonna come to a situation where people are gonna start dying, and then they're gonna start keep taking, uh, taking notice. I feel like another big thing you mentioned was like people setting people up. So like the girl setting the guy up or the guy. Well, it doesn't really happen the other way around, but would you say the girl usually sets the guy up? 100%. We hear it all the time, bro. Yeah. Every time. Even people don't I understand. hear that. And I'm like, it happens I can't all the believe times. that is happening. Girls don't realise how bad it is. It's very, you have to understand one thing. You can't commit a crime in this city, in this town, in this country and think you're going to get away with it. It's not possible, right? Unless we're talking little minimum stuff. But if you're setting up mans and that man's getting very, very injured, it's going to be... A day, two days, three days. You seen that documentary about uh, Gugendeep? Do you, do you know what I'm on about? Anyone see that documentary? Explain a little bit more, I might know. Right, so there was a kid, right? Mm -hmm. He passed away a couple of years ago, right? What's happened is he's got a thing with some girl, right? His best mate also had a thing with that girl. Right. That girl has called him down to Southampton, right? He's gone down there because he's all loved up with this girl, thinking, yeah. right, yeah, he's gone to a petrol station, yeah. he's gonna bought a teddy bear. In his Aww. head, he's thinking, right, I'm gonna make up with this girl, right? He's gone there, what's happened? That His own best friend has set him up with the girl, killed him. I've heard of that. I have Imagine that. that, your own best friend, your so-called boy, and the girl that you're so-called in love with, set him up. How can, how can that's, that's a madness. What did they do? They caught him within 24 hours. You can't do this shit and get away with it. But these girls, they don't understand They this. don't understand They don't that. understand this. And now there's an incentive. Now boys are turning around saying to the girls, listen, I'll give you five packs. I'll give you 10 packs. Let's make this happen. Rah, rah. Girls are thinking, rah, quick five packs. So when the guys turn around saying to these girls, listen, here's five packs, line up so-and-so because they're going to, I don't know, make a 10, 20, 50 grand earner. To them, it's a light work. Mm. Guys are dumb, bro. They're sitting there, yeah, yeah. Dumb, it? it's stupid. Everything's revolved around money these everything, days. Everything, everything. The whole, the whole country's revolved around money. So who would be different? Yeah. Girls, above, girls have got the same situation. As like, let me give you an example. You do, uh, you do freshers, I'm guessing, right? Yeah, I'm just doing a freshers tour kind of thing freshers right now. Freshers tour, all right, yeah. cool. So now let me give you an example. These are kids that are probably hanging got money, but you're probably going to the club and they all signed and armed out. Yeah. Gucci, Louis Vuitton, you think how the f are they earning that paper to get this in the first place? A lot of people come from very humble beginnings. Yeah. Where are they getting a thousand pound jumper and a thousand pound pair of trainers and that? But they get their student loans and the first thing they do is go calm this and then what do they do with the rest of the month? They're sitting there broke. Sitting there broke. Sitting there broke. <laughs> Everything's revolved around money. You want to impress people, you want to spend money. What's all people want to do? Everything's revolved around money. That's it, isn't it? Um, what's your opinion on university? I like, hate universities. You hate university, I okay. hate, them. <laughs> hate them with a passion. I wish I owned 20 universities because it'd be a money printing machine. Um, let me explain one thing to you. Someone has sat there, looked at the British uh, 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 Education Service, and, yeah. and uh, sorry, someone has sat there and looked at the British universities and thought, you know what? Let's look at this as a business. Yeah. Right? Because that's what it is. It is a business. It's a business. So now, the uh, average student, um, what is it? The average, I'm uh, sorry, it's been Nine a while. Nine grand a year. Nine grand a year. Yeah. I think it's a bit more than that, love. I think it, no, I don't. 9.2 and then uh, for international is 14. Gee, I think it's like 19 grand. Okay, nine grand is the education fee, but if you want it obviously accommodation, that's all all extra costs. So what I was told the other day, and I was having a conversation with the guy, maybe he was talking, but maybe he was telling the truth. 
We don't know, we can Google it, it'll be funny. But what I was told, it costs 19,000 pounds a year, including all the grants and stuff like that, to go to uni for one year. An average uni degree takes three years, right? Yeah. So we're talking just under 60,000, what, 57,000? Yeah. And apparently right now, someone sat there, snob, snobby little <laughs> and thought, you know what, let's make some money off of this situation. So now what they've probably gone and done is thought, okay, where are we getting our most amount of money? You said it was international students. You said it was 14,000 a year. Mm. Well, there's actually 33,000. That's what they're discussing right now. Wow. They're thinking, you know what? We're getting more money from international students. Because thinking about it, we've got some rich from Saudi Arabia, some Arab. Yeah. They want they their sons going to the study. baddest uni so yeah. they can be sick when they're talking. And yeah. So now they've got money. They can afford to spend. They can spend 100 grand a year. It don't matter. They're rich. We're not rich. We've come from humble beginnings. We're poor. We're the average taxi driver's son. We can't afford that. So now what they're thinking is, all right, cool. Let's put the prices up. Let's put the prices up so we can get up to 33,000 per student. They ain't got the money, it's not a problem, we'll give it to them. You, as a 19, 20 year old, can't walk into a bank, right, and get a five grand loan, 10 grand loan, 20, yet they wanna give you 33 grand a year. That don't make sense. Yeah, it does. What they're trying to do, trying to get you into debt, they know what they're gonna do with the money. As soon as they get the money, they're gonna spunk it. What are they gonna spunk it on? Dumb shit. Gonna go to the club, spend it on bottles. But you must, you must have seen beer, people sparklers going off and everything. Yeah, it's so true. I know, because when I was younger, this is what I used to do. I used to go out with my pals, right? And we used to sit there and we used to watch everyone pop bottles and I used to be there jumping along with them. <laughs> so it's like one of them was like, I understand it's nothing's changed. In the last 10 years, nothing's changed. Nothing's it's ever gonna same. change. They get their loans and they start spunking it on doing dumb shit and then the rest of the month they're living broke. Mm. And now they're indebted for the rest of their life. You know, up until now, I spoke to a mate the other day and he's like, I'm still paying my uni fees off. That's 10 years ago. Yeah. Imagine that, 10 years in, you're still paying your uni fees. It's a joke. It's, it's just, just a, a headache month. It's, that it's is a not head needed. You're putting, them, you're putting these youngsters into more of a situation than you would have just gone uni fees. And who are you learning from? These 25, 25, 30 years old people. How important do you think education is? It's very, education is very important if you're getting the right education. What are you going uni for? Nine times out of 10 people are going uni for their experience. True. They're not going there to learn because if they wanted to learn, they could sit at home with YouTube on their desk for day in, day out, spend five, six, 10, 12 hours a day and do that from home. No, you go there for the experience. You want to yeah. go there, you want to go fresh, you want to you want to <laughs> <laughs> wanna keep it respectful because you got a lady here, right? But they want to go link girls. And I understand that. I fully understand that. But no good's going to come from that. Innit? You're learning from people that haven't been successful in their own lives. How are they going to teach you how to be successful? Yeah. You're talking about a 17, 18, 19, 20 year old young mind and they listen to professors that are 25, 26 years old that can't even pay their own bills and they're telling you how to run a business. That don't make sense. I feel like the one thing we don't get taught at school, college, university is how to live in this world. We get taught any, everything else, but not how to live, how to manage money, how to buy properties, how to invest in properties. That's one thing we don't get taught. But the thing is, they don't want you to work. They don't, yeah, they they don't, don't want, want you to, to make money. Why, if they want you to make money, they want me to tell you, who gives a fuck about history? Geography the other day. Yeah. Was like, oh, look as fuck. Like this shit, that this, you're, imagine you've got a can, right? We're not gonna show the can, because like you said, we're not, they're not sponsoring us <laughs> yet, right? And you keep <laughs> filling up this can with knowledge. You keep filling it up. It's only going to come to a point where it's going to be top three. There's only so much a mind can take. Yeah. You're filling it up with garbage and, and but stuff that is irrelevant. Not the necessary stuff. Imagine you took out all that bullshit. You just put necessary stuff in there. You'd be f***ing all right. Everyone would be striving and they don't want that. 100%. <laughs> okay, I want to talk about your cars now because you collect so many supercars. Uh, How yeah. many cars do you currently have? Put it this way, I've got a lot. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't, what's the figure? Roughly. I'll put it this way, I can have an accident in a single car every single day and not have to worry about it until the next month. I've got a lot, I've, you know what, it's, <laughs> it is a nasty habit. I need to stop doing that, I'll be honest with you. I'm gonna stop doing that until the next one comes. But I've got a few cars. <laughs> I love cars, my passion here. I love cars. What's your favorite car? The one we got coming, <laughs> we can't mention that. Okay, so current needs, one that you have, what's your favorite Currently, car? Currently right now is a more Aventador. It's an Aventador SV Roadstar, one of 500. Um, it's a big car. Uh, I love that. It's a green one. That's yeah. what everyone knows before because I drive it all the time. I saw it on your Insta. <laughs> Someone's been stalking it, bro. <laughs> <Right>? Done my <laughs> research. <laughs> research. And then I've got, obviously, I've got the uh, that special one, the 458 Spider. That's, uh, so I've got the lowest mileage 458 Spider in the world. It's got one mile on the clock. So that car I bought for Sha uh, Saudi shape. So he was, he was mad about cars. He had that car sitting there. Never let anyone do any miles. Never let anyone do any miles wow. in that car. It's one mile, so that's the, I've got two, three Lamborghini Huracans. I've wow. got two Audi R8s, uh, one Spider, one Convertible. I've got four Range Rovers. 
Um, what else have I got? Aston Martin, James Bond. Oh yeah, Bentley Fine Spur. Two Rolls Royces and the Porsche. My little brother has to tell me and remind me because... <laughs> we, it's, Can't keep it in your brain. <laughs> uh, um, I'm sure we've got one more. Ferrari F12 Berlinetta. I've said two Rolls Royces. <laughs> M4, yes. I've got an M4 as well. C no, C C three convertible, and and I bought my dad a Tesla the other day, which I'm very proud of, by the way. Right, wow. so my dad will never take nothing off me. Never, he has never asked me for anything. We have to literally force it down him. Yeah, right? and he's always going on about Teslas, right? My dad's a taxi driver for all of his life. All he knows is taxi, right? And you have to understand. Up until 10 years ago, now this whole thing about electric cars and all of his friends are still taxi drivers and they keep going about Tesla's Tesla. <laughs> I said, Dad, we're going to surprise him. So I ended up buying him a car. It was a Tesla. And I'm, you know what? It was, it was a good moment for me because he would never take it. I could buy him a Ferrari. He wouldn't care. But the Tesla meant more to him than any other car. So we're, oh, we're happy, wow. man. And other people say money does buy happiness. Yeah, it does buy you certain things. And, that, and memories like that, from when you have to understand, when I was a young kid, I've walked into... Uh, a situation where when I was about 10, 11 years old, we yeah. grew up in Luton. My dad was a taxi driver. I remember four, five o'clock in the morning, I walked downstairs, there's police outside. I'm looking, running downstairs and I see a samurai sword through the window of my dad's taxi. So we think, what's going on here? Now someone has jumped into my dad's cab, right? And literally pulled a knife, a samurai sword. Samurai swords are massive. They're massive. Yeah. Put it through his neck and his instinct straight away kicked in, pushed out the way. As he's break the car, it's gone straight through the windscreen. He's come out, ran off. The, the, the guys ran off and like, please come and all that. His hands are all cut up. Even got scars till today. So you have to understand, natural instincts wise, it's embedded in him. Mm -hmm. Protect your life, whether it's verbally, physically, mentally. And he's taught us from a very young age. So that's why when you see certain things about me, the way we talk and the way we act, that's because it's been embedded into us from a very young age. Yeah. And it's very important that when you're a young age and you're naive and you're dumb, that you get the right information coming into your head. So you should make sure that the people that you look up to are the right people. Because I can almost promise you, social media will make you believe the worst yeah. about someone or the best about someone. And it'll be the complete 360. Yeah, it won't be the truth. 180, whatever it is. Yeah. Right? It won't be the truth. Let me give an example. The other day we was with Money Kicks, right? And 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 we're doing a bit of work. We're doing yeah. a bit of work. We're finished up and now we're having food. Mm. We're sitting down on a massive table. We've got about 10 mans there. We've got a security there. We've got everyone there. We've got the drivers there. Everyone's sitting on the food. We're all having food. Money Kicks walks in. Now this is a billionaire's son. Rashid, right? Yeah. Everyone knows him, right? He's picked up a slice and he's gone sat down on the floor. Imagine that. A billionaire's son. I've just looked at him. I've not said a word. I've just looked at him. And I nodded and I was like, yes, that kind of stuff there is what you call humble. Yeah. That kind of stuff there, you can't, you can't fake that stuff. But if you look on his Instagram, you see big cars, you see big watches, big, um, big shoe collections and, and holidays and trips. But social media will get you twisted. Now, it's the same with this whole fake lifestyle stuff, right? And I keep saying to people, stop looking at these kind of people, right? I'm not talking about Rashid. Rashid is a very good influence, um, uh, a, a person to be looking up to. But yeah. what I'm saying is, because now he's making millions off his own back. He's yeah. not, off his, not off his family. He's making it all off his own back, right? Which is good. You need to be careful who you follow on Instagram, social media, because they'll, they'll get you looking at life a bit different. And that's not what it should be. People, people nowadays want to live that big lifestyle. And it's not right that I should be doing the same thing, putting up watches and cars, but I'm celebrating life. Okay, so how would you say your upbringing kind of shaped you into be the successful businessman you are today? It was the best thing in the world. All the experiences I've had in my lifestyle has made me the man that I am today. All the experiences. Yeah. And I tell everyone the same thing, like I was just talking about, be you. Don't yeah. worry about everyone else, right? Be weird, be different. This is what stands out nowadays. Before, back in the days, it, being weird was, well, fucking hell, he's a weirdo. Stay away from him. Now it's being weird. It's like different. It's like, you know what? Nobody cares about the person that's the same, following everyone else, trying to be the same. Be you, be different. And that's it. All your past experiences. If I, like, let me give you an example. All the past experiences that I've had in my life has made me the man that I am today. I wouldn't change it for, us, for anything. I learn from my mistakes. That's yeah. the difference. A lot of people don't want to learn from their mistakes. They do the same shit over and over again, expecting a different result. That's just stupid. I do a mistake. I learn from that learn mistake from it, so yeah. it don't happen again. Mm. Right? I've got this saying in the office. If there's a problem, I want five solutions. I know I've got three fingers up, <laughs> but I'm a bit dyslexic. <laughs> you want five solutions. So you I want five solutions to that one do. problem. So if anything ever goes wrong, we got anything. You know what I'm saying? I've got a driver sitting outside. I've got two... 
We're not going to talk about that. We've got two escape routes ready. Anything happen, we're ready. I'm a, I'm a big guy. Yeah. They're worth a lot of money, right? I don't want to be caught slipping. I don't want to be in a situation where um, potentially I could lose my watch. Mm. I could potentially lose my life. I could potentially lose any... I don't know people's intentions, right? I got to take it face value. But I should always not be naive enough to understand that, look, have a backup plan. Mm. And this is the same in life when it comes to work. You can't expect to go into work every single day thinking this is going to be my job and I'm going to be sitting. Brother, do you know how many people we fire on a weekly basis? How many people we got rid of this week? Two. That's a light week. That's, that's a light week. <laughs> well, you don't need an escape route here. Say again? You don't need an escape route here. You don't need an escape route. We've got a light here, innit? He's, 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 he's coming strapped, innit? <laughs> but two in a week and that's a light week. That's a good yeah, People think they're secure. Yeah, everything's secure until they're not, innit? You fuck up once, cool. You fuck up twice, you're gone. I don't give people second chances, innit? Yeah. And I'll be honest with you, I ain't got time to mess about. Mm. And this is how I am. I'm ruthless. When it comes to business, I'm ruthless. But at the end of the day, that works for me because yeah. I can get away with it because everybody wants to sit on my table, right? But starting off, it's the different way around. I got to be begging it. I got to be doing this. I got to be... No, now it's now. I'm chilled. But I've put in my graph to be in this position. Yeah. Right? Does that make sense? So someone else's situation might be different to yours. So you always got to play your own cards, isn't it? Mm. Would you say religion plays a big part in your life? Religion plays a very big part in my life. I'm very, very, very... I'm not going to say I'm, I'm, I'm very religious, mm -hmm. right? I try to keep it as religious as possible. Okay. Right? I know I do a lot of bad things, right? But it doesn't mean I'm a bad person. That's true. And everyone sins in their own way. And you should never expose anyone else's sins, right? That's one thing I'm 100% like. If you drink, you drink. If you do what, so that's your goal. That's your issue. You, you don't need to answer to me. You answer to God, Right? Religion should play a big part in it because you know what it is? We've got an advantage. As far as I see it, we've got an advantage. We don't do half the dumb shit we are supposed to do considering what our mates do. Let me give you an example, right? When you was younger, right? I'd say, well, you, I'm guessing you're Indian, right? Yeah. So you, uh, Punjabi? Yeah, Sikh Punjabi. Nice, Punjabi, right? Yeah. Sikh Punjabi, sorry. So my girl's Punjabi Sikh, right? So let me give you an example right now. When we was younger, we used to go to McDonald's and we used to sit there eating fillet of fish burgers do you know how many <laughs> times we used to sit there and smell that motherfucking beef burgers those cheeseburgers never used to have them we couldn't have them why because of our religion i went to dubai the first time in 20 was it 2008 2009 mm. the, the, it was like i was eating it just melts in your mouth oh, do you know what <laughs> just go to dubai just for the cheeseburgers <laughs> and do you know what it, 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 religion will stop you from doing the dumb shit you need to do yeah to make yourself socially acceptable Socially acceptable now is going out, getting drunk every week and getting up. Why? Because you want to escape realism. People get people don't drink to just have a little sip. They don't stop at one drink. They want to get fucked. They want to get plastered. They want to get faced. Why? Because they're trying to escape realism. The the reality of you know what we're in a club situation. That's all they're looking forward to is the weekend. We want to go out on the weekend so we can get faced because come Monday we're going to be working. We're going to have to worry about the bills. We're going to have to worry about the mortgage, the finance. My baby mum was talking. It, and it's just heading. People, so people live for the weekend. That's all this. Yeah. That's no good. Stick to religion. Stay away from drugs and alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I want to ask you: Have you had any like kind of situations wearing an expensive watch or any like dangerous situations? I alhamdulillah, you know, I've never had a situation like that where I've where I've um, been in a position where I, I never put yeah. myself in that position. I, like I said, I always have. You know what I mean? I have my yeah. head screwed on. That's why I don't do yeah. drugs or alcohol. I want to always be on point focused. On point, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Um, Andrew Tate, what's your opinions? In a ways, a lot of people have compared me to this whole Tan Andrew Tate situation because we're very similar in the sense where we love our cars, we love our watches. But it's, 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 you can't judge someone just because you're very similar. So we've got very similar views, mm. right? He has some views that I don't agree with, but that's his views. That's his opinions, right? There's some views that you might not agree with. But that's my views and my opinions. But then to labelize it and say, oh, you're the same. No, everyone has their own opinions. We grew up on the same road. He was on Bath Road. Mm. We was on Cotton Crescent, literally 10 second walk. Yet we've got very similar views. Yet we never crossed past once. I've never seen this guy in my life, right? Never even heard of him up until a couple of months ago. And I'll be honest with you. It's a bit, it's, don't you think it's a bit funny? Like, <laughs> I don't know, some of the stuff he talks about, and I think, I think, bruv, is this guy like, 
literally like it's like we're talking from one one it's like, it's like i'm talking about your brother we yeah. have a very similar a lot, uh, I, I feel like a lot of females have an opinion about andrew tate but then a lot of males have a different opinion but i don't know why that is because do you know what it it's is very like one it's very like gender kind of you know what it is right he's 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 clever in the sense where he says what angers you you yeah. react and it goes viral it's not even about viral it just he just finds it funny he finds yeah. it hilarious let me give you a prime example Dawood, he was sitting here yeah. i see that i see that clip when he's talking about black magic Bruv, Devil's i understand magic. what he's doing the majority of the young kids that are seeing it they don't understand what he's doing i know him very well he's not in no black magic i can assure you that man. yeah it's just sleight of hand it's just literally um look left well something happens on right lucky because that is my left but that's right but my <laughs> camera is reversed anyway right but a lot of young kids will think that's the way to get and that's i don't agree with that i do not agree with that whatsoever he's a good friend of mine as well so i tell him as well yeah but i understand why he's done that he's done it to anger people so people start talking about it and start thinking and i understand that and that's the same thing andrew tate's done but what he does is he <laughs> angers the people yeah and people have that they see that one clip i've got a million one clips where people don't agree with me a million one clips and i've got a million clips that people do agree with me but it is what it is. You can't tell. Uh, you know what? We're not going to talk about Andrew Tate. He's just, it's just, it just gets <laughs> we're too gonna, much. We're going to leave that one there. Yeah, let's leave that conversation there. Um, okay, so if you had a partner in business, so they yeah. had their own business as well, would you support that or would you expect them to just like chill and like do nothing? Do you know what it is? Uh, my, my job is, like, like, you've seen the way I am. Yeah. My job is to protect my family, make sure my family are nice. Mm. If my missus don't need to work and don't want to work, I'm not going to force her to work. I'm making enough for all of us. So I don't think that me growing up, watching my mum, right, slave away at that fucking sewing machine, that my kids should sit there and watch my mum do the same in it. Well, my missus do the same in yeah. it. So Alhamdulillah, we're good. So I don't need my missus doing it. And I don't think, I don't think if she wants to, she can go ahead and do it. It's not a problem. If she feels that, you know what, I'll get bored at home or whatever. Not a problem. Go get a job, do a business, start a business. I'll support it regardless. And that's how people should be. People want to lock away girls and say, yeah, you're not allowed to go out. That, but then we see a clip. Ah, uh, the, the guy went shisha with his wife. What was that clip? Yeah, the guy said, oh, you went shisha with his wife. You went shisha with your wife. And I'm looking at him thinking, rah, is that what we're saying? You're a kid now because you went shisha with your wife. But what the we live in 2022. Yeah. Go enjoy your life in it. What are you worrying about? You got a big man coming out today and you're talking about, oh, my mom went shisha with his wife. Bro, what's wrong with this geezer for clout? But I'm going on the internet talking shit just so he can get a few views. But that's your views. Keep your views to yourself. No one cares about that shit. But if a girl wants to go shisha, if you want to enjoy your life, do it, whatever. Cool. Keep it halal, whatever. Mm -hmm. and if you want to go out, have a good time, go to a restaurant, go out for a nice little walk, go shisha, whatever you don't want to do, that's on you lot. Who are you to judge? Worry about your bow head. Don't worry about other people, man. <laughs> anyway um okay so what advice would you give like the younger generation starting up a business let's say they didn't want to get into education and do that normal pathway what would you what would your advice be to them if you want to start up a business you got to know what you're going into because it's not easy it's not easy people think it's easy it's not easy right you could either do that whole nine to five thing mm -hmm. you'll be poor but you'll be happy you'll have the time to go see your girlfriend you'll have the time to go to events i haven't been in an event my family events for a long time i haven't been you know what the other day i went bowling yeah man went bowling after 10 years <laughs> right of being with my girl imagine that i went bowling and i'm sitting and i'm launching the ball it's going over there it's going over there and i'm sitting there I'm big green sitting from here to here <laughs> i've never had the time to do that because i'm too busy making money so now you can give away your freedom Right, sacrifice your family time, your girlfriend's time, your all that, mm. but you'll be poor. Or you could be in business, spend a lot of time trying to make money and up your game and do that, and then sacrifice. And then if, if, if that's really what you want, that's what you got to do, and you got to make that hard decision. Don't just jump into it thinking, yeah, I'm going to jump into business and it's going to be successful from day one. It's never going to happen. Do you know how many mm -hmm. failed ventures I've had over the last ten years of me in business? How many? So many. Yeah. I'm going to say about fifty percent. Fifty percent. Is that? Is, is that? 70%, 70% of my businesses have failed. I'm talking about businesses that I thought were going to make it. I've invested in that company and that company's gone to up. Yeah. Right? So you have to understand, the first thing you do is never gonna work out. And you're very lucky if it does work out, happy days. Maybe the second one don't work out. Maybe the third one don't work out. But if you quit, you're always gonna be that guy that is just never, if you quit, that's it, it's done. Keep that, keep that. 
one day you will come across something that will end up blowing up. You might even be the first of that. And that's it. That's all you got to say. You just got to keep trying, keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. Keep trying. That's it. Look, let me give you a prime example. The boxer mm -hmm. goes into the ring. What, he's going to be a champion the first day he goes in? He puts in years and years and years of work into it, gets the technique, gets the right thing. Then he becomes good. You can't expect to go into business thinking you're going to make an overnight success. I am 10 years into being an overnight success. Put it that way. You understand what yeah, I'm trying to say? that's a very good tip. I am yeah. 10 years in to being an overnight success. I make it out like I'm the man right now on the internet. Bro, new money. I've, I've been doing this for the last 10 years. I've been hustling. But the, last night we was up to what time? Four in the morning. We was working. Yeah. Gee, you messaged me. No, you didn't message me. Someone else messaged me. I said, gee, I'm working. I was in my PJs. I've still got, you know what? Let me show you. Look, one second. <laughs> you think I'm joking? <laughs> what time was this? I'll show you right now. Um, let's have a look at There you go. I was at... There you go. Look, you can't even see my PJs, but look, there you go. Yeah, it's part of the grind. That's what I'm part saying. I'm sitting in my office, chilling, right, working. Everyone sees on social media, I'm chilling, partying. Rah, 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 rah. Work, 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 work. It's just work. But at the end of the day, I'll get to now enjoy my life. Yeah, I like that. Well, thank you so much for coming on my podcast. I really enjoyed having you on. And for those of you that don't already know, get to know Amio Italio because he is honestly amazing. Absolutely love the vibes, love the energy. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching my podcast.